What's going on YouTube? It's Wayne with Wayne's Fish World coming at you with my 55 gallon saltwater tank and in this video we're going to talk about how to cycle a saltwater and a freshwater aquarium and it's pretty simple but we're going to show the tank off a little before we actually get into that. Now I'm going to show you my aquascaping first and just keep in mind that this is not the final product of the aquascaping. I do plan on adding an arch about right here and then another arch somehow right here. So this is nowhere near done. Now the first thing you can notice about this saltwater tank, soon to be reef tank, I left my live rock open. And there's some key factors in why I left my live rock open and we're gonna talk about that in more depth into another video. But to brief it up, I left my live rock open for a couple main reasons. One, your live rock is your best biological filter along with your sand so you want your water to pass through it to filter it literally filter it and then second i don't want dead spots and detritus build up um there's nothing worse than dumping your live rock in as the uh saying is in our hobby it looks like someone took a five gallon bucket and dumped a live rock in that's very bad and uh second all this rocks and ledges and little caves act as territories and these fish, I mean, they can swim in it, they can hide in it. And perfect example right there, that Royal Grama, he was never fr uh, camera friendly. Uh, he just darted behind some live rock, and you can see there's plenty of little habitats and little niches in here. Uh, you can see the water is super clear all the way across the tank. And you can see all the way over there. Um, and the other reason is, the final reason, is because I'm going to introduce a yellow tang and a blue hippo tang in here. Now, there's some tricks and uh, there's a lot of debate on what tangs can go on what size tanks and I'm gonna cover that later too in another video because tangs are my favorite fish yellow tang especially and uh, to brief it up I want to leave my live rock open as much as possible so these tangs can have lots and lots of swimming room now to move into the cycling your aquarium oh before we start I guess it can tie in but I will show you cyanobacteria did start growing in my tank and you can see it's starting to die off now it's starting to come off the rocks um, and diatoms form. Diatoms form as nitrates form. Same thing as cyano. Cyano also forms when there's low oxygen and there is phosphates in the water. And that ties in with the cycle. So I guess we're done talking about the tank until we update it to have an update video of the tank, but time to dive into the cycle. Cycling your aquarium. If you guys are new to freshwater or saltwater, this is going to be great information, so take some notes, guys. Um, believe it or not, and I'm going to say this, some, some of the more experienced watchers are watching right now, and they know this, but if you're new, um, just keep in mind, you cannot put water in your tank and throw fish in there automatically and expect everything to be fine. There is a cycle we call the nitrogen cycle. There's also a phosphate cycle too, but we're not going to talk about that in any way possible in this video because it's just, it's too much. Now, the nitrogen cycle. What is the nitrogen cycle? It's simply the cycling of nitrogen. Nitrogen has phases in a, basically a life cycle. And check out my skunk cleaner shrimp. I added him a couple days ago. Um, he's finally coming around. Love that guy. I had one before Hurricane Irene, the power outage. Um, different subject. Now, the nitrogen cycle, how it starts is from organic waste decaying. Meaning, let's say I feed Nemo right there. That's not his name. But uh, let's say we feed Nemo. Nemo's going to poop. And that poop's going to dissolve in the water. Now, that poop or pee or whatever they got or waste or uneaten food or just organic buildup in the water is going to lead to ammonia. Now, there's an aerobic bacteria in the water, well, not in the water column, but on the surface area in your tank. That can be on your live rock, your tank glass, your sand, uh, your overflows, anything that's, you know, solid. It'll form on that. And uh, it's aerobic, I mean, aerobic bacteria forms. And it breaks down ammonia into nitrite, nitrite with an I otherwise known as NO3, I mean NO2, my bad, NO2, NO2, NO2. Now, another aerobic bacteria takes that nitrite with an I and does the same thing, breaks it down and turns into nitrates. And nitrates, NO3, is the so-called final step in the nitrogen cycle. And in salt water, you'll see diatoms form 
and sometimes cyanobacteria and what they're gonna do is basically eat the diatoms I mean not eat the diatoms is basically going to eat the nitrates and once the nitrates go down so the diatoms and cyanobacteria it's a food chain uh, diatoms can only populate as m as many nitrates there are in this tank I mean there has to be a food source somewhere so there is a way to remove nitrates and that's through anaerobic bacteria so let's say you have a denitrator or a deep sand bed uh, plants stuff like that can remove nitrates but the water change is the best friend in the uh, in your aquarium now that's how you remove nitrates in the final in the final step if you don't have anaerobic respiration you have to do water changes and you cannot do a water change while your tank is cycling and you guys are probably thinking well how long is it going to take to cycle my tank i can't tell you it might take two days it might take two weeks it might take a month it might take 30 to 45 days it's never going to be the same for anyone you're going to have different bio loads in your tank from your live rock or whatever you got or if you're starting a cycle with fish, which I don't recommend, um, it's never going to be the same for anyone. So the only sure way to go find out if your tank is actually cycled is if you go out and get test kits. Now test kits are going to be your best friend because in saltwater you're going to be using them a lot, um, most likely once a week. And if you're really into it, you should be. I mean, you can test any day or how many times a day you want. So you need a couple test kits. You need a phosphate test kit, ammonia test kit, nitrite with an I, and a nitrate test kit now you're thinking it's expensive to buy them individually and it kind of is so if you can find a test kit with everything in it uh, they usually come as a pack for like 25 bucks or something like that at PetSmart uh, Petco local fish store sell them uh, that's great and it's gonna save you a little in the long term now the reason you need nit the test kits because that's the only sure way to find out if your tank is cycled first of all you're gonna see a spike in ammonia ammonia will go sky high once ammonia is eaten up by the air with the aerobic bacteria, your nitrites with an I will go up. Now, once that's eaten up by the aerobic bacteria, your nitrates will go up. And your nitrates will go down after diatoms form or cyano or something like that depletes the nitrates in your tank. Now, uh, you also see nitrates deplete with anaerobic respiration or some kind of refugium with fly plants. Other than that, nitrates won't go down. You have to remove them through a partial water change. Now, after your tank is cycled and you have no nitrates or very 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 low nitrates it's finally safe to introduce some fish but before your fish though you should actually introduce some in cleanup crews invertebrates and you can see I've gone ahead and introduced one already my skunk cleaner shrimp and we named him Louis because uh, he looks like a French uh, cook or something I don't know but uh, we named him Louis and you should start introducing invertebrates such as snails crabs uh, shrimp sea cucumbers slugs anything like that now you must and I repeat you must do your research on the invertebrates before you purchase them because sometimes invertebrates will eat corals I mean I'm not kidding guys it, it can happen uh, some invertebrates don't get along with certain invertebrates some fish eat the invertebrates so you really have to do your research and do your homework and find out what fish you want in your tank find out what invertebrates you guys before you even start get setting your 55 I mean your uh, your aquarium up you need to have a game plan Dustin preaches this all the time you need to have a plan and New York Stilo says uh, patience I have I say determination and it's a mixture of all these things but I think Dustin has it spot on you have to have a plan you have to have a game set uh, I mean I'm guilty of it too in the past but I, I hate it when people go out and get like 20 tanks. Oh, I can't say that now. Uh, having 20 tanks is not wrong. But, uh, I mean, they don't get what they want because they're always not planning. You have to figure out what you really want and then buy a tank for that fish and accommodate for that fish. You can't expect to, you know, get a 55-gallon and say, oh, I want a naso tang. And then you throw a naso tang in here and it gets half the size of your tank. And you're like, oh, crap, what do I do? Um, so you have to plan, guys. Figure out what fish you want get that tank size it can can live in properly and happily then you can take on another step forward get the fish that can cooperate with that other fish that you want get the invertebrates like say I wanted a human huma trigger he would eat that little uh he would eat that skunk cleaner shrimp I mean he would eat him for lunch second that shrimp goes in there he'd probably take a bite out of him so you have to be patient guys and just do your homework do your research have a plan and 
you know, have determination because you're going to run into problems. Like, like New York Steelers said, you know, he saw diatoms. He took all his live rock out and scrubbed down when that was the wrong thing to do. You just have to have determination and just keep pushing through the bad times. I'm not trying to, trying to uh, discourage you, but you will run into problems and you have to learn to fix these things. And that's why I make videos to help you guys. So make sure you do your cycle, guys. Test your water. There's no if, and, or but. Oh, your tank's gonna cycle in two weeks. You don't know that. It can cycle in t two days. It could cycle in two months, two years. Oh, maybe not two years, but I mean, it's possible. I mean, no, t no tank cycles the same because, and the more fish you put in your tank at once, the longer it's going to take the cycle. Honestly, like say I introduced all these guys in at once and I did, but my live rock was already, you know, seeded for like five years and I just threw it in two 10 gallon tanks to keep it alive. But if I didn't have these live rock, this live rock or sand that was already ready and I threw one, four fish in and a skunk cleaner shrimp, they probably all die because the ammonia buildup would be so intense and then you'd be replacing the fish and they die too and then your tank would finally cycle after losing so many fish and you did it the wrong way so do it right the first time guys and get it over with um now that's pretty much it um now to cycle a saltwater tank you can either do a few things live rock is good because it's natural and the decaying matter in live rock will actually produce ammonia and like i said in the past the ammonia breaks down. You can throw a piece of shrimp in there, let it decay. Feed your tank without fish in it. And the other way is the, I guess you could call it inhumane way, but you could do a fish cycle with some hardy fish like damsels. And I don't recommend this because it is it is harmful to the fish, even though damsels can withstand it. It's, I mean, I mean, you could live in a room with an air fresher that pumps out bleach, but it'd be harmful to you. You would feel the effects. And so the damsels. So, I mean, if you don't give a crap about the damsel, I mean, I'm not telling you to do it, but it's possible. But it's not the right thing to do to the fish. So live rock, you can cycle your tank. You need live rock anyways. I think that's the way you should do it. And some people say dry rock is the best. And that's all depends what you're doing too. With corals, I mean, you don't want parasites and stuff. That's a different story. So that's how you cycle a tank, guys. If you have any more questions, let me know. Let's take a look at what's going on with this tank. Because I know you guys want to see a little update with this video. Alrighty. Two Oscularis Clownfish. I got these guys a couple years ago. They were my pair. Uh, this is the... Which one is the older one? Damn. Uh, I think this is one of the older one, and this is the younger one. Nemo and Marlin. I know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, this is Rain. Got him... Oh, shit. Like, three or four years ago? I don't even know. It was a long time ago. Um, I've been with my girlfriend for five years. Got him the second year I was with her, or the year and a half when I was with her. So... He's old. He's about three or four years old. Three and a half, four years old. Um, Royal Grama. Where'd he go? Well, you guys saw him earlier. But I got him right after I got these two Oscar clowns. Skunk Cleaner Shrimp got two or three days ago. Um, there's a couple snails in here, too. Uh, this live rock is about five years old, guys, because I actually had this 50, well, the old 55 gallon tank right there before anyone's, I even had a YouTube channel. So basically, the yellow tank I had in here who was in here before anybody else he was five years old until hurricane Irving hit last year so basically some of this live rock is pushing around six years old so it's properly seeded and a lot of the coralline algae died off because take a look at this video right here and you guys can see before the live rock was covered in coralline algae and this stuff will grow back now enough of the tank let's look at the sump um this is the overflow i love this thing guys this is the return and I mean, it has a 560 gallon power pond pump on there for a return pump and it's doing this. So I gotta do something with that. Um, but basically water flows down here into the sump. Now I do plan on with a water change siphoning this out every now and then. Um, if this is not permanent guys, I just got it set up for the time being. It flows down through here, hits my micron sock. Good aeration, that's for sure. Uh, deep sand beds going right here. I just haven't uh, actually got around to doing it. There's a chump of uh, Chetomorpha and Red Dragon's Tongue. There's going to be plenty more macroalgae down here later on. There's two heaters, which I'll replace in the future with one nice titanium heater. Uh, my eShops 125 Protein Skimmer is... It's been on this tank for maybe two days, a day and a half. And it's, it's, I mean, it's producing a little bit down there. You guys can see it. This is a wonderful Protein Skimmer. Um, I love this Protein Skimmer. Uh... I am going to build an auto top-off system later on. 
and the return pump's a 500cc gallon per hour pond pump. It's got a bag of Kemi Pure Elite there. I gotta get some more because uh, this one pouch is not adequate for all this water volume. Um, over here, my auto top off system is gonna be built in, and basically it's gonna hold a 10 gallon tank with the float valve in here. When the water goes down, water comes down and then the float valve goes back and keeps the water up here. And the main reason I got that is because I'm gonna add corals later on, and there's a world grama, but uh, I want the salinity to be stable. And the protein skimmer, a lot of people say, oh, you should have got it uh, in some protein skimmer. Well, I'm not going out and buy another one. Uh, if you wanna pay for it, I'll be, I'll be glad to get one. Um, but I'm gonna stick with this one because I mean, hang on the back, gives me more sump room, and I mean, it's nice. It's not as good as in sump, but it's still nice. Um, so, yeah, and then I am going to cut into this vinyl tubing or splice it and run a UV sterilizer and probably mount it up here and then uh, pump that back into the system. The reason I want to have a UV sterilizer is because cut back on algae spores and cuts back on parasites and stuff like that. I do have a skunk cleaner shrimp, wolf, which will actually eat ick off the fish, but just want to make sure have that much more clear water, that much more healthier water and it's just going to be looking that much more crisp that's what's going on youtube any questions let me know if you're new to my channel definitely check out some other videos i've got plenty of ed educational videos out there from 125 gallon fish tank uh 1500 gallon koi pond 55 gallon reef tank and uh that's what's going on guys i'll see you next time comment rate subscribe later